Welcome to Kirkwood School District Sound and Light 6th grade science. We're going to take a look at today understanding how surfaces can affect the behavior of visible light rays. And we're going to get into three very specific types of surfaces. One called translucent, the other one transparent, and the final one opaque. So let's take a look at the first one. What makes an object transparent? Well, if an object is in is transparent, that will allow certain wavelengths to pass through them and objects can be seen clearly. So for example, this canoe that you see here on the screen um, transmits light, allows light to pass through it clearly without affecting the light rays. Examples of things that are transparent are glass or acetate. Um, sometimes, depending upon if there's a really thin or small amount of water, it could be considered to be transparent. But once you start looking at all these, you'll see why only a very small amount of water would be considered transparent and more amounts of water would, would not. Okay? What happens when you have a transparent object is when light rays hit it, light rays pass right on through or they'll transmit right through the object. Let's take a look at translucent. Translucent objects only allow some colors of light to pass through, but not others. Materials that let light pass through but cannot be clearly seen through, they diffuse or scatter light. So you've got uh, two great examples here. The first one is uh, frosted glass. You can see how you can see the house clearly on this side of the window, but once you get into this design area where the object has been frosted, that light is scattered or diffused, so it's not able to clearly pass through there. Stained glass windows are another great example of objects that are translucent because you can see that light can go through them, but they change the color of light. So for example, this area right here where it's blue, that white light hits the window and then becomes blue light. Only blue light is able to pass through. All the other colors are blocked. Examples of things that are translucent, wax paper, frosted glass, lots of water, tinted windows, okay? These uh, CD cases over here are great examples of things that are translucent. You can see that the reflection of this, these CD cases on the table are clearly seen, but yet you can see through the, the CD case. So when you're thinking of drawing a picture, a light ray hits the object that is translucent, Light is let through, but it changes direction a little bit. It scatters light a little bit. And possibly even some of that light could be reflected. Okay, so a translucent object has some properties of transparent, but it also has some properties of this last one we're going to look at, which is called opaque, pronounced opaque, P-A-K-E, opaque. So, an opaque object, materials absorb or reflect all of the light. They do not let light pass through it at all. So, you have examples of opaque objects like a book, a wall, a door, a desk, a tree. All of those things are examples of items that are opaque. Like this bucket right here. The light ray hits the object, and in this case, all the light is absorbed. If we replace this bucket with a mirror, if that light ray came, came in, that light ray would bounce off. And we'll talk about that here very soon. So there are some exceptions to these rules we talked about earlier. A very thin sample of an opaque object could be translucent. I always think of a, a sheet of paper. Sheet of paper, I can't see through it, but if it's very thin and I put it over to the top of another object, I might be able to read writing through a sheet of paper. Also, adding more layers of a translucent object can scatter the light more and more and more until it's all scattered or reflected or absorbed, making the object opaque. A great example is why the ocean bottom is so dark. Sunlight can only go so deep, so the water being translucent continues to add more and more layers, becomes opaque. 
When we see these objects of color, we talked a little bit about this earlier with the stained glass window. Some of the thing we want to consider is if we're looking at, for example, this, this red ball, okay? The sunlight comes down, hit the, hits the red ball, but because it's opaque, all of that light is reflected. Well, if the object is red, the reason why we see it as red is because only the red light is reflected off of that. All the other colors are absorbed. A great example of this is if I'm outside on a hot, very sunny day, imagine wearing a white t-shirt and then changing into a black t-shirt. What we know about the color black is that the color black absorbs all the color of light. So when we wear that black t-shirt, we're gonna get considerably hot, much, 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 much hotter than if we were wearing a white t-shirt. The white t-shirt, the color white, what we know about the color white is that is the reflection of all colors in the visible spectrum. But what happens if we turn on a light in our room and that light in our room is a color? Let's say it's a red light or in this case, in this picture, a green light. Everything in the room is going to react to that green light and reflect some form of that. So imagine this room. What, what color do you think these sheets are? What color do you think this wall is? Do you think all of them are green? I would imagine that the answer is probably no. I bet you these walls are white and these, this bed and all these bed sheets and comforters are also white. But when we shine a colored light on them, the object takes on and reflects the color of light that is available that goes with that object. All right, so what we were looking at is we were understanding translucent, transparent, and opaque, and we wanted to understand how surfaces affect the behavior of light rays. To wrap this up, I've got a video to show you. I will see you later. Enjoy this video from YouTube. Hey, Jimmy. Hey, Amy. What do you got? Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about the differences between opaque, translucent, and transparent colors. Mm -hmm. Yep, and this came about because of Facebook. We got uh, people writing into us, and they were saying, what does it mean to be transparent, translucent? It's confusing. Yeah, it's confusing. Our yep. terms are. Yep. Yep, so we've got some examples here of the different types of color. Uh -huh. This is the one you're holding up right now is an opaque color. Right. Okay, it's uh, medium magenta. And as you can see, we've painted the color on top of this black stripe to show you that opaque colors totally obscure everything that they're put over. You can't see the stripe. Good cover, good like, hiding power. Good hiding power. Right. right, I had this happen in my studio recently. Reached for a tube of paint and I picked up a transparent mixing white mm -hmm. and I didn't realize I had it on there. Oh, and and you were looking for an opaque color. Right? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to figure out why is this not covering. So well, this is a, this is a good point, actually. How do you find out, you know, you whether or not you're the, the tube, tube right. baby. You read There's the tube. a lot of information on there. The front of the tube, it's got it right it's on there. It's going to tell you right on there, it but it's opaque. opaque. Yep. Okay, great. Absolutely. So let's move over to translucent, yep. which is sort of in between transparent and opaque. Sort of middle of the road. Middle of the road. This is deep violet, again painted on top of the black stripe, and you can see that now you can see the black stripe through the color layer yep. a lot better than you can through the opaque right. layer. Right. Yeah, okay. which is which is different than obviously the last the one. The last one, which is transparent. Which is transparent. Okay, yeah. this is quinacridone magenta. Again, on the black stripe, you can really the black stripe is really starting to affect the color layer on top. You can really see that black stripe through. And uh, we were talking about this. You were saying you yeah, go back yeah, to color theory. Yeah, you go right? back to your color theory days. If you're an art student or if you had that, and it, it reminds me of color theory where you know, this has become a totally different. Totally it's, different. it's optically mixed on there, and the, yeah. the square in the center is totally different. Totally different. Yeah, yeah. and then we finally got some. Take uh, we move from. Pro uh, practice really or theory, theory rather, to, right. practice. to practice. How to practice. would you use the differences in these colors? Exactly. Okay, so you're holding up a palette knife painting uh, that was made using all opaque colors. Mm -hmm. So you can see, you know, good covering power. Does, you can't see anything underneath there. Yep. Okay? Direct painting method. Direct painting. Mix method. up the color on what the palette. You see, put it down. Put it down. Right. Yep. And then as, this one. As opposed to an indirect painting method um, using glazing, in which you're using transparent or translucent colors and you're layering them up and letting them mix optically. Right. You're layering them up on your surface. Okay, so here, this was a, a monochromatic underpainting that was done somewhat opaquely. Mm -hmm. And then on top, coming on top with the thin veils of transparent or translucent color, to give yeah. you that jewel like and, and it's, effect. It's a, almost literally like night and day. That's right. See that. right. Yeah. yeah, and you know, this is like kind of how to get an oil paint feel exactly. into your acrylic paintings. So uh, the, the key thing to learn here is know your, know your color, know your paints, know what's going on with them. Mm -hmm. Read the tubes, there's a lot of great information on there, and it'll tell you what you need for the job at hand.